Yeah. So now we know、um, if we are minimizing a convex function over a convex feasible region, then a local mean is a global mean. So that's something related to the first difficulty. Now let's talk about an、uh, extreme point optimal solutions. What will happen if we minimize a concave function? No,、oh, that's something you may want to ask because if we minimize a convex function over a convex feasible region, local mean is a global mean. How about this? Turns out that if we minimize a concave function, we have extreme point optimal solutions. Intuitively, for a concave function. If we goes toward the boundary, then we will go down, right? And going down typically requires us to go toward the boundary. So if we are minimizing, or、uh, minimizing a concave function, optimal solutions intuitively appears at boundaries. Oh, and we have the second proposition: for any concave functions that has a global minimum. Over a convex feasible region, then there is a global minimum that is an extreme point. Okay, this is very similar to the property of linear programs, right? For a linear program, if there is an optimal solution, there is an extreme point optimal solution. For a concave function, if there is a global mean, then there is an extreme point global mean. Fortunately,、uh, the proof is too hard, so let's skip it. Also, huh? This property is only for theoretical purpose. Uh, we can see some connections here and to linear programming, but when we are solving a problem, typically we do not use proposition two. Typically, we rely on proposition one, as we will show you with examples. So, uh, to give you some more ideas about the two propositions, let's use the special case linear programming to give you uh that idea. We know、oh, when we are minimizing small f over a convex feasible region capital F. If small f is convex, then we only need to search for a local minimum. If small f is concave, then we only need to search among extreme points. Right? And these are the two conditions we have, and not very surprising. For a linear program, we have both. First, we need to show you that the feasible region of a linear program is convex. Okay, and in the next slides, I'm going to show you, for a, a linear function, it's also convex and concave. Okay, let's look at the feasible region. First, the feasible region of a linear program is the intersection of several half spaces. Right. Ah,、uh, if we have a less than or equal to constraint, then We will have a feasible region like this. Now,、uh, if it's less than or equal to, if it is inequality, or if it is equality, we have a line. Ah,、uh, these are two-dimensional situations. On a multi-dimensional situation, ah,、uh, we will either either have half spaces or hyperplanes. Okay, given by inequality or equality, it is very trivial to show that half spaces. And the hyperplanes, they are always convex. Then the only thing remains is to show that the intersection of convex sets are convex. Graphically, this is somewhat intuitive. Suppose I have a convex set here, another convex set. Then, given two points in the intersection, the line segment must also be in the line segment because the both the two sets are convex. Okay, you may want to、um, try to prove it by yourself, but the intuition is here. Another thing we need is to show that a linear function is both convex and concave. So let's use this as an example. Uh, what we need is to show this equality, because for convex function, or for convex function, any line segment must be greater than. Or equal to the function itself. Here, this is the function, and this is the line segment. So for a convex function, we have、uh, less than or equal to. For concave, we have greater than or equal to. Okay. So 
we need an equality. We need an equality. Okay. So, uh, what's going to happen if we have linear functions? Suppose f can be expressed as c transpose x plus b, uh, as a linear function, and then for this left hand side, uh, for f of this guy, it's just c transpose times that plus b. C transpose whatever uh, can be decomposed, right? Uh, this is the first term, and the, this is the second term. For b, we can also decompose it into lambda b and 1 minus lambda b. And then it's very clear that every equality follows. And a linear function is both convex and concave. So again, graphically, this is also very intuitive. Given a straight line, any line segment is also above and below that particular function, okay, weakly. So a linear function is both convex and concave. So because it's both convex and concave, we only, well, because it is convex, we can use a greedy search to focus on local mean. Because it is concave, we only need to focus on extreme points. And then, no, to solve an LP, we may do a greedy search on extreme points. And that's exactly the simplest method is doing, right? No. Each time at a basic feasible solution, we look at an improving direction. And that's a greedy search. We don't really worry about what's going to happen after 10 steps. All we want to do is, at this moment, we need to move in an improving direction. That's greedy search. And we jump to the next extreme points or basic feasible solution in each iteration. So now we understand the simplex method more and about why it will work. Because we are minimizing a convex and concave function over a convex feasible region. Okay, so uh, in general, a nonlinear program is like this, right? If the feasible region, oh, the, 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 the set of points satisfying all those functions, if the feasible region is convex and the objective function is convex, then a local mean is a global mean. And this is the most important thing we need to use. So let's give it a special name. The NLP will be called a convex program if the two things happen. Okay? An NLP is a CP if the feasible region is convex and the objective function is convex over the feasible region. Uh, one technical thing is that we may minimize the convex function or maximize a concave function. In either case, we call it a convex program because we, we know that's just equivalent. Okay? For convex programs, people know that there are efficient algorithms. Okay? Now for it, just like the linear programs can be solved by the simplex method, convex programs also have some general efficient algorithms for them uh, to be solved. The subject of formulating and solving convex programs is convex programming. Okay? So that means uh, we know how to solve them, but we, we probably need to know what are the algorithms, what's the complexity, which one is better, and so on and so on. That's the field of convex programming. So when is a nonlinear program a convex program? Uh, we need to give you some conditions for you to show that. For a nonlinear program uh, like this, in general, we talk about the following two things. We need f to be convex, and we also want g's to all be convex. Okay, the 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 feasible region uh, is represented by several inequalities. Okay, inequalities. If all the g functions are convex then the nonlinear program is a convex program. So let's first see why. First, the objective function is convex, so that's fine. We need to show that the feasible region is also convex. Suppose we agree that uh, the 
the the the the union and、uh, sorry the intersection of convex sets is a convex set. Then, as long as all the uh all the feasible sets according to one constraint is convex, then their combinations will be convex. So let me say that again. There are m constraints. Each constraint is going to give you one feasible region. We want to have the intersection of all the feasible region. If each piece is convex, then their intersection would be convex. Graphically,、uh, suppose I have a nonlinear program. Suppose this is given by g one x less than or equal to b one. Oh, suppose this is my first. First piece of a、uh, feasible region. I probably also have the second piece. I probably have the last piece. Okay, and then we can see the 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 intersection here is convex. So what we really want to tell you is that we only need to show each piece. Of feasible region is convex, and now we're as we're telling you that if G is a convex function, then this is fine. So, given that G is convex, let's try to show all the points satisfying this inequality.、Um, the set is also convex. Suppose we have two points in the set. We want to show that the line segment connecting these two points. Is also in this set. So, given any arbitrary lambda within zero and one, we need to consider what's going to happen if we plug in a point into the G function. The left hand side is the functional value, okay, and we want to see that the right hand side、uh, will be、uh, the right hand side is the line segment, okay, it's a line segment. Given that G is convex. We have this inequality, and then G of x one, ah, G of x one is less than or equal to b one, ah, b i, right? Ah,、uh, sorry, this should be G i, G i, G i. Yeah. Ah, because x one and x two are feasible, x one and x two satisfies G i x. One or less than or equal to bi and so on, so we have this inequality and the together they give you bi. So that means the combination is also feasible. So repeating this for all the i, we're going to complete the proof, and to show that a program is convex, this is the way for doing that. Please remain remind yourself that this is a sufficient condition. If all these functions are convex, then the NLP is convex. But it's also possible that、uh, some functions are non-convex, but the, the 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 NLP is still a convex set. That's of course possible. Okay. So now we have a larger relationship map. Network flow is a special case of linear programs. Linear programs are special cases of convex programs, and convex programs are special cases of nonlinear programs. Integer programs are somewhat、uh, special. In general, we can also define integer convex programs, and also integer nonlinear programs. In general, these two fields are、mm, just extremely hard. Okay, so that's why we do not touch them in this course. For nonlinear programs, oh, in this course we will only discuss how to analytically solve them. So unlike for linear programming, we teach you、uh, the simplex method. For nonlinear programs, we will not teach you any algorithm for solving them. We will focus on situations or problems that can be solved analytically. Okay, analytical solutions are the foundations for managerial insights. Every time when we solve a linear,、uh, when we analytically solve a problem, we're going to 
try to get some economic interpretations or managerial insights from it. And that's because we are in the business school. Every time when we solve a problem, we want to learn something from it instead of just solving it. Anyway, you will see examples. So, at least uh, technically, uh, at this moment, please just know that if you have a convex program, people can efficiently solve it, uh, just like linear programs. But if you have a general nonlinear program, which is non-convex, then it's possible that people don't know how to efficiently find an optimal solution. Okay, so given a real problem, as long as you can formulate it as a convex program, you're done because there are solvers that can solve them. But if you formulate it as a non-convex, non-linear program, then it's hard. Okay.